Hey everybody, let's play NES. I'm Josh from Offhand Games, and in this episode we play L'Emperor, or L'Emperor. I don't know, that sounded more Italian than French. Um, but it would translate into the Emperor, Napoleon. I kind of skipped a, apparently skipped a cutscene there. But uh, Koei, um, makers of Romance of the Three Kingdoms, and I saw that it was part of the historical series, so I'm wondering if this is kind of the same game, only set in France, or or what. Um, we have these different scenarios. There's no uh, Napoleon living out his days of exile, <laughs> which would probably be a boring turn-based game. Uh, let's go with the first one, Napoleon's Beginnings. Again, with the watching the computer play. I, no, the whole point is that I play. Uh, View Wars in Other Cities. I, I, oh, I hit right, that was no. Uh, everything all right. I like that the game cares about me. Yes, everything's fine. Alright, so... Okay. So it's going to be kind of hard to tell what's going on at first. I kind of have to acclimate myself to this Russia stop trade with Austria. Yeah, this looks like one of the early, early versions of uh, Romance of the Three Kingdoms set on a different map. Everyone's plotting strategies. I don't think I'm doing anything yet. Everyone else gets to take a turn before France. This is going to be almost too confusing for me in this particular case. I mean, it's like playing Risk on a video game. I mean, I love tabletop board games, but when you convert those kind of games over to video games, they don't really work unless you simplify them. Um, Alright, so... I'm also going to mispronounce a lot of French cities. Uh, Marseille. Uh, Napoleon looks pretty young there. Kind of an anime Napoleon. Let's, um... We're going to go ahead and get the jump on somebody. Let's invade! We're right here. We're going to invade by land. Right here. to nine, send whom, send Joseph, we want to send Napoleon and his hundred men, so let's take Joseph back, he's only got five dudes, well okay, it says up to nine, so, two, three, four, five, six, Messina, one out of two pages, okay, up here, to go to the right, okay, well then, seven, eight, Marmont, Marmol, and Kellerman. You know, you stay here. Uh, end. Uh, send how many reserves? Zero to seventy. We're send all of them. Need two hundred forty for thirty days. Take how much food? Uh, we'll take three hundred in case we get slowed down. I have no idea what I'm doing. Yes, we're going to invade. Like how it shows the units that are being used. <laughs> Men on horseback are, have like little knight pieces. Oh, this is a little bit better looking. It's like it's like a hex map depicted with squares, but it's about the same kind of layout. Um, so here, my hand started on this left hand side, so I'm guessing that's me. I'm not hard to tell. No, this. I'm, Surely this white here is me. A? No? Maybe not. Maybe I have to pick them down here. What are these black squares? Okay, that's me. Yes, Joseph. Um, move? What is... Okay, A. Maybe I'm just activating them? Direct the artillery where? Up. Alright. It's kind of tedious because it's taking a little while to flash. This is like playing Risk with flashcards. Alright, they're approaching. I hope they approach from the north. I aimed my artillery up. Um, can we move now? Napoleon. Napoleon's about to get blown apart. Ha ha! 
these cannons over, aim them in that direction. Get this cannon over. And the music is just super exciting for this, uh... <laughs> for this particular slow-paced game. Explode! Oh, they, can, they can rest instead of explode? Go ahead and move these guys over. I at least want to see an, like a conflict, like if there's some animation or something like that. Okay, they're gonna they're gonna move now. Okay, good. Move over. It's gonna be a bottleneck on that bridge. It's gonna be hard for us to invade. These horses should move more than one square, right? Yeah, they can move three. This is the kind of stuff that made super nerds back in. Uh, Back in the 80s and 90s, these kind of games. Alright, let's move in. I want to see head-to-head -head combat. Yes, we shall attack. Aw, some flashing back and forth. I was kind of hoping it would be um, kind of like Fire Emblem, and maybe cut to a little scene of those two units fighting each other. But no such luck. Go ahead and move these guys up. This kind of makes me... Can I move into the water? Yeah, not enough mobility. Probably takes two movement points to move into the water. Um, this kind of makes me want to try Romance of the Three Kingdoms. I mean, I wouldn't say that I'm having a like the best time ever playing this game. It's actually not, not my style of game. It hasn't aged very well, uh, like, like many NES games. But I've made this commitment to... To, to play these, you know, I, I, I want to experience the ones I never played fresh, and um, the only thing I can not avoid bringing to the table is, uh, you know, already knowing newer games that have done things better. Alright, so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and skip turn. Can I skip turn? How do I skip? B, stall? Okay, yeah. What's he gonna do? Worms her. His morale is increased. Come on, Napoleon. Just wipe them out. Move these cannons in so I can get people across the bridge. We're gonna aim up. It's weird. You want to hit the direction on the D-pad that you want it to face, but really, if you touch anywhere on the D-pad, it just rotates clockwise. I'm assuming I can't move units through each other. I'm gonna go ahead and move this horse here. And if I try to hit here, yeah, I can't pass through. So we're just kinda stuck on this bridge. I, I shouldn't have sent the cannons in first because they really slowed everybody down getting across this bridge. But Napoleon's men got in first. And they still have 96 left. I think that's gonna be key to, uh, to winning the conflict on the other side of the bridge there. We're gonna move. Let's move Joseph and his four friends. Alright, now we're gonna stall. I would've called it end turn, but maybe that was before someone came up with that clever idea. Oh man, I wish I knew how to do that with my cannons. Maybe I can select my cannons and tell them to fire that far? Let me go ahead and try that. Cannon. Bombard. Bombard the general back here. In your face! in your face three times. I don't know how many units he has though, I guess you can't really tell until you're upon them. Until you've actually had close-up conflict and can assess how much uh, damage they've taken. He's gonna move up through the hills here. The horseman is gonna move across the bridge. Let's take Berthia, move him across the bridge. Move him back here to make room. Marat in. I I like games like like Fire Emblem, and I guess without games like this, you know, they they never would have um, they would never have existed. So, you know, it takes it it takes games like this. It takes someone actually committing the the time and energy to to make something with this much 
thought and, and tactics built in with such a limiting system uh, as an inspiration to people later on to make games uh, like Final Fantasy Tactics. Um, I, can't, I keep coming back to Fire Emblem. This, uh, you know, as I play it, really does remind me of Fire Emblem. I keep using this cannon to bombard the who I'm assuming is their leader back here. My leader's up front. Napoleon. Let me see if I can... No, I can't really move him in. And see if we can move Napoleon up. I think I said yes. I hit up, and you're supposed to hit left for yes and right for no. Move uh, Argero down here and attack. We can finally wipe those guys out. Yay! It's, uh, it takes a little bit longer than you'd expect to, to actually have a round go on, but I mean, what else is this game going to be made of but, uh, but these conflicts? Could you imagine what it would take to, to seriously uh, conquer all of Europe? I mean, I hope that this game saves. Oh, enforcements are coming in. They might just hand my ass to me then. But, um, but yeah, like the amount of time this one invasion is taking. And then you have, you have to factor in, attack, attack down here. You have to factor in that there's like reinforcement and, and, you know, getting, getting food and surplus, things like that shipped in between these combats. This game would, would just take forever. I mean, I'm sure it's a, Histor world history majors wet dream to play this game, but um, okay, can we attack here? Yeah, uh, I don't know if we, that we even really have time. I mean, we're we're pushing just past 12 minutes now on this, and I, I don't like my uh, videos to go much longer than this. Um, I mean, I, I do kind of want to finish this fight, but when those reinforcements showed up, it kind of made me feel like uh, it would take a really long time to do so, and I might actually be pressed um, because I rushed so so quickly into battle. I might be pressed for um, for survival. I may have spent a few more units than I than I should have in the beginning. Disloyal troops. They're, they're thrown into dis disorder. Because I'm standing... I've got all of my men across the bridge, that's why. I mean, I would have liked to make it to their leader back here just to see how many guys he's got. I keep bombarding him. Bombard their leader! Oh, I can't reach him. Bombard the horses in front of the leader! Am I not aimed that way? I guess I couldn't shoot at that one. But I hit the one just below it. I wonder if this game just leads up to the inevitable uh, trying to invade Russia in the winter, and then and then if you can succeed, make a Harry Turtle Dove alternate history out of out of everything by by succeeding more than you even should as Napoleon, and then you conquer the entire world. I mean that's kind of what they did with. Um, Romance of the Three Kingdoms. I mean, you could, if you play as one and do better than history um, or the original story really depicted, then uh, then you, you just sort of change history. Um, in Dynasty Warriors, it's the same way. You play as one side or the other, and when you win, I mean, that's the that's the reward. You you change history for the person that you played as to victory. But um, I'm actually gonna try to finish this up. Maybe. Maybe on my own time? I don't know. Like, I, I feel this this strong need to finish this battle, but I don't really have a strong desire to, to play and complete this game. It's, it's really weird. Um, as far as my rating, my typical ratings go, uh, graphics, as you can see, for, for a strategy game, it's sort of like a, a tabletop game depicted digitally, and that's not exactly awesome. Um, the music has been tense since I started, and uh, it does loop after a little while, but it's not it's not really tedious. It goes long enough before it before it loops back over, kind of like a 
boss battle music in Final Fantasy or something like that. Um, take him out. Uh, replayability, only for history buffs. And um, like I said, I'm I'm not gonna come back to this. Uh, this doesn't really appeal to me and and my typical. Uh, you know, I only get to play games when I have time. Not only would this game take up an excessive amount of time that I don't have, uh, but also I feel like my time could better be spent enjoying uh, a genre that I really um, already like. Oh, holy crap, he's got 196 men. Yeah, we definitely can't finish him off in this video. So, um, so yeah, that's uh, L'Empereur. Um, as always, thanks for watching Let's Play NES. Uh, you can share and like the video and subscribe to the channel to help us grow, and I'll see you next time.